Welcome to Nobilis Erotica, the best science fiction and fantasy erotica anthology podcast in the known universe. This month, a bisexual mermaid tale. Well, not exactly a bisexual... A bisexual story with a mermaid. Yeah, let's go with that. This is episode 464. I am your host, Nobilis Reed. This episode of Nobilis Erotica is sponsored by the generous patronage of Nobilis Erotica listeners. To help out paying the authors and voices that create these stories, visit patreon.com slash nobilis. The November patron-funded story is Moonlit Tidal Wave. We'll be getting to that shortly, but I'm going to take a moment here to ask you to please listen through to the end for an important announcement about my novel, Monster Whisperer Second Class. The author of this month's story, Nyla Luster, specializes in the offbeat and avant-garde subgenres of erotica. This includes fantastical forays, steamy sci-fi, and maybe even a smidge of shifter or paranormal. When Nyla's not writing, she can be found gaming or curled up with a good book and a dirty martini. She is the author of Extra Credit and a short erotica serial titled Ghost Groom. You can find her at nylaluster.wordpress.com. Our narrator, Joe Bennett, is a non-binary professional actor, theater educator, and storyteller from Indianapolis, Indiana. When not on stage or behind a mic, they can be summoned into being by assembling freshly brewed black coffee, occult rock vinyl, pretty rocks, and queer erotica. Find them on Twitter at Ready Steady Joe. That's got three E's in it. That just just get the link off the website. Here we go. Moonlit Title by Nyla Luster. Katie eased into the sand as she watched the sun descend behind the sea's edge. Deep, vibrant hues of apricot and amber danced across the turbulent water. As the orb extinguished its glow, Katie realized her cheeks were wet with tears. She surrendered to the anguish she'd been carrying inside and let sobs flow through her body. She'd shown up ten minutes early for her date with Jack. Katie had been fixing her lip gloss in the rearview mirror when she'd seen a woman with auburn hair unlock Jack's car and rummage around inside. Katie had been about to charge out and threaten to call the police. Then, the mystery woman had gotten into an SUV with a My Child is an Honor Roll Student bumper sticker prominently displayed on the back and drove away. She must have known Jack very well for him to have given her a copy of his car keys. Katie felt her stomach drop. She'd considered pretending that she hadn't seen anything. However, when Jack had knocked on her window a few minutes later, she'd been sure he'd have a rational explanation. As he'd climbed into her car, his hands had immediately snuck under her top, finding purchase on her breasts and squeezing them a little too hard. So, this wasn't going to be an actual date, just a car hookup, Katie had thought. Jack nuzzled her neck and unfastened her bra. Jack, stop, she'd said, pushing him back over to his side of the car. Baby, I only have ten minutes. My boss moved up our afternoon meeting. I'm not even going to have a chance to eat, so I need some of your sugar to help me power through. He pawed at her chest again. She'd been annoyed to find that she'd already been turned on at the thought of a quickie. Katie pushed aside her carnal desire and turned in her seat so she was just out of the reach of his wandering hands. Jack, I just saw a woman get something out of your car and lock it. Who was she? He'd leaned back in his seat and ran his hand through his hair. What? Well, how long have you been sitting here? My class ended early, so I've been here for a bit. Are you spying on me? No, Jack, why can't you answer the question? Who the fuck is she? He looked out the window for a moment. Well? She'd asked again feeling that sinking feeling grow stronger as the seconds tick by. She's my wife, he'd replied in a monotone voice. Katie felt like she'd been slugged in the stomach. How could you? 
she whispered into the long silence that permeated the car's interior. Katie, Katie, look. We've had fun, and you're a special girl. But you had to know this wasn't going anywhere. I've got to go. That meeting, remember? Take care of yourself. The slamming of the car door had echoed in Katie's heart. Jack hadn't bothered to look over his shoulder as he'd slinked his way across the damp parking lot. Katie sat there in shock, then drove for the coast in a stupor. How could she have been so stupid? She hadn't been to his place, ever, even though they'd been seeing each other for two months. He told her his texts and phone calls would be sporadic due to his work schedule, and he'd never spent the night. She'd refused to see the signs because she'd been so in love with the idea that a successful, mature man had wanted her. And now, here she was, sitting alone on the beach, contemplating whether she could survive the pain of not only being abandoned, but also the guilt of being the other woman. While she'd been driving towards the ocean, she'd run through a dozen revenge scenarios involving Jack's wife. Alone in the dark, with only the waves as her background soundtrack, she realized it wouldn't do any good. It would just hurt his wife and his family. She heard a weird whining. And it took her a few minutes to realize that the sound was coming from her. She felt like a wounded animal. Wrapping her arms around her knees, she rocked, trying to calm her inner turmoil. A melodic voice rang out. Excuse me, but are you hurt? Startled, Katie scooted back. To her left was a nighttime swimmer lying in the shallows, looking at her curiously. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know there was anyone else around, she said, feeling a wave of embarrassment. I understand, but are you hurt? the dark-haired woman asked as she tapped her index finger against her bottom lip. She shrugged. Not physically. I found out my boyfriend has been cheating on me today. Technically, that was true, and right now a little female sympathy would be welcomed. Oh, I'm so sorry. I felt that you were in pain, even though I was pretty far out, the stranger replied. What, are you, are you psychic? Something like that. My name's Nerissa. The stranger extended her hand, but didn't move from the water. Katie splashed up to her knees into the ocean and bent down to shake her hand. Her skin was like satin. I'm Katie. Is it safe for you to be swimming out here alone? The realization that they were out here by themselves awakened her street smarts. Nerissa's sultry laugh made Katie's ears tingle. Oh, I assure you, I am quite safe as long as I stay in the water. Why don't we go for a quick swim? I guarantee the sea will make you feel better. Katie looked at the ebony pool swirling around Nerissa. It would be chilly for sure but maybe a little physical discomfort would take her mind off her emotional pain. She nodded, backing onto the beach and quickly removed her shirt and shorts, leaving her clothed in only a white lace bra and panties. Take those off. It's just us girls, and I guarantee you'll want dry clothes after we're done, Nerissa suggested. She shifted out of the water just enough that Katie could see she was topless, and the water was indeed very cold. Katie paused before stripping completely. Nerissa's gaze slowly wound its way down her body, taking in her upturned breasts and smooth mound. Feeling a little uncomfortable, Katie quickly waded into the water and dove in, relishing the tingle of the cold against her bare skin. When she resurfaced, she saw that Nerissa had kept pace with her. They swam side by side into the middle of the ocean. It felt good to use her body, 
to channel her betrayal and depression into productive action that warmed her. Treading water, she turned toward Nerissa. She appeared a little older than her and had smoky eyes that complemented her curtain of raven hair. Want to race back? Nerissa said, her eyes gleaming mischievously. Without waiting for an answer, she dove underneath. Katie powered back, using her muscular legs to propel forward, but she was no match for Nerissa's graceful strokes. She didn't even look out of breath. Hey, no fair, Katie panted from the exertion. Winner gets to pick their reward, Nerissa said, wetting her bottom lip with her tongue. It glistened in the moonlight. Well, what do you want? A kiss. Katie opened her mouth to protest, but her gaze took in Nerissa's large breasts, buoyant in the water. She examined the graceful slope of her shoulders and how her dark hair accentuated the muscles in her back. She moved closer. Nerissa closed the distance, gently taking Katie's face in her hands as she traced the delicate line of her jaw. Katie's lips parted slightly, and Nerissa pressed her warm mouth against hers, slowly massaging her lips. Nerissa flicked her tongue in and out of Katie's mouth slowly. It felt as though she was pumping life back into Katie's frozen body. Suddenly, the iciness of the water didn't matter anymore. Nerissa drew back, and Katie was met with longing. She craved the other woman's touch. They stared at each other for a moment before Katie took the initiative and held Nerissa close to her, their breasts touching as she nuzzled her neck. Nerissa let out a gasp and ran her fingertips down Katie's spine. The next kiss lasted an eternity. It was deeper than the first, and Katie could feel her southern region tingling with desire. Kissing Nerissa was so different than kissing Jack. Nerissa seemed to know exactly what Katie wanted. As Katie's breasts were slowly caressed, she ached to have Nerissa warm her hard nipples in her supple mouth. Not a moment later, Nerissa complied, swirling her tongue around each nipple and flicking them lightly with the tip before sucking on them. Katie moaned in desire, her hands exploring Nerissa's breasts. They were larger than hers and much heavier. She ran her finger over Nerissa's stiff peaks. The woman's hands ventured to the core of her desire. Making small circles over her clit, Katie felt tension building deep inside her. Nerissa moved lower, her fingers teasing Katie's outer lips. Katie spread her legs, inviting Nerissa to penetrate her. The first finger worked inside Katie gently, and each slow thrust made the burn of desire a little warmer. Kissing Nerissa passionately, she rocked her hips against the motion, encouraging her to drill inside with more force. Being penetrated just the right way was overwhelming. Nerissa found the elusive spot inside her and massaged it. With every swipe of her fingertips, Katie cried out a little as her pleasure grew. As she was about to crest the peak of orgasm, Nerissa withdrew her fingers. Katie opened her mouth to protest and was met with a combination of her own taste and the saltiness of the sea as Nerissa traced the inside of her bottom lip with her finger. Without a word, Nerissa twisted onto her back and pulled Katie on top of her face. The two fingers snaked their way inside again, finding purchase on the spot guaranteed to make her see double as Nerissa's tongue softly licked each side of Katie's clit. She rocked slowly against Nerissa's fingers, pressing her mound down harder on her mouth. Suddenly, a new sensation overtook her as something caressed her taint making its way down to her southern hole, circling and teasing with soft, wet licks. She was too focused on her impending orgasm to question the physics of limb arrangement. 
Her moans deepened as she rode the crescendo of lust up to the summit. The thrusts quickened, causing her to rock more forcefully. Nerissa wound her tongue directly onto Katie's clit, slowly stroking it up and down. She felt the tip of something penetrate her asshole. The combination of all three things at once caused her to cry out as she unraveled in ecstasy. She arched her back and came all over Nerissa's face. The release of the fluid was so powerful that snow fell across her vision. Nerissa kept Katie's inner folds pulled close, lapping up her juices as the excess blended into the seawater. After a few moments, Katie's breathing returned to normal, and she carefully rolled off the other woman. Nerissa's hand caressed hers as they both looked up at the stars. The warm, silky satin feeling of Nerissa's touch increased the intensity of her afterglow. She felt a little selfish, unsure of exactly how she could reciprocate the act. Reading her thoughts, Nerissa pulled her hand towards her tail and allowed Katie to touch it. It felt otherworldly, not like how she imagined scales would feel. How do I... Katie let the question trail off, wanting to please the other woman. Nerissa shushed her, holding the human palm to her tail a moment longer. You don't. Not this time, anyway. I told you a swim would make you feel better, Nerissa said. Thank you, Katie replied, as Nerissa kissed her softly on the lips. Katie looked up at the sky as she listened to the splash of Nerissa swimming away. Jack was now a fading constellation. Katie stirred in her sleep. The silky sheets caressed her exposed thigh. She grasped the edge of her pillow, working the memory foam in her fist like a lump of clay. Katie arched her hips up a little and spread her legs, allowing the phantasm in her dream easier access to her salty recesses. Her buttocks clenched as she rode the rolling waves of slumber into ecstasy. Yes. Ah, oh, yes, Nerissa. Please don't stop. She whimpered under her breath. The thumping of her heart against her chest and the sudden flush of lust against her body woke her from her dream, and she bolted up in bed. Katie smoothed her long hair back, cringing at how tangled it had become from her late-night swim in the orgasmic waters of lucid dreaming. It was as vivid as that night almost a month ago when she had first encountered the beautiful water nymph, Nerissa. Katie had walked around in a fog for a week, basking in an afterglow that was unlike anything she had ever experienced in her encounters in her short list of male lovers. Once the warm blanket of satisfaction had slowly unraveled, Katie wondered if it was all a dream. A dream like the one she had just woken from. She closed her eyes, reliving every detail. Licking her bottom lip, Katie swore she tasted the sea. Once she realized she was dreaming as she was walking on the very beach where they had met, Katie decided to summon Nerissa. Hearing her call, Nerissa swiftly swam to the shore, her curves looking even more luscious than Katie had remembered. Her lips had paused at the thought of sucking on her ruby nubs until stiffened against her tongue, then flicking them until Nerissa's breath ran ragged. It took you long enough. I've been waiting for you to call me, she said parting her raven locks so that they cascaded down either side of her shoulders. As she shifted her head, water trailed down her breasts, which were naked and floating freely in the sea. Not waiting for a reality check, Katie immediately stripped out of her nightgown. Weird that I'm wearing the same thing that I fell asleep in. could my imagination come up with at least a sexy bikini? Despite the cold water... Nerissa's arms wound around Katie's waist with a warmth that was a testament to their enduring passion for one another, 
Her fingertips grazed Katie's tight buttocks, then took a hold of the flesh, kneading them in her hands, almost entranced with the action. Pulling Katie fully towards her, Nerissa buried her face against her neck, gently sucking on it, then nipping it, before drawing her full lips to capture Katie's. Their tongues greeted each other tentatively at first, until Katie relaxed into the soft kissing. Nerissa drove hers fully into her mouth, reminding Katie of how exactly orally skilled she was. Katie caressed Nerissa's breasts, fingers just shy of greeting her points. Nerissa moaned, pressing them against Katie's palms. Her thumb traced light circles, drawing in tighter until they reached the twin bullseyes. Nerissa quickly responding to Katie's touch, nuzzling Katie's neck again. The light trail of Nerissa's tongue sparked waves of electricity to run down Katie's spine. Katie's mouth sought out the solace of Nerissa's nipples, quickly flicking her tongue, getting the exact reaction she'd been hoping for. A glimmer of something primal flashed across Nerissa's eyes. She responded in kind, her fingers teasing Katie's own peaks, pulling them slightly away and then letting them spring back. Despite the water, Katie could tell that her own desire was coating her center. Bolder after her first encounter, Katie ran her hand down the length of Nerissa's torso, slowly, wanting to draw out caressing her exquisite curves. She marveled at the seamless way the flesh melded into scales. She wound her hand around Nerissa's mermaid ass and squeezed a little unsure of how exactly to please the lower half of this beautiful and mystical creature. Nerissa let out a sigh, so Katie further explored the other woman's scaled southern region. Something was different, right where Nerissa's own center would be if she were human. The texture of the scales became softer and yielded more to being caressed, Nerissa's hand grasped hers, yanking it back up. Not yet. Pleasing me is more complicated. What I really want is to make you say my name over and over again until you forget your own, she said, trailing her fingers down Katie's stomach, and then her tail wound around to the inside of her thighs, stroking them. Well, this is my dream, Katie agreed, parting her thighs, surrendering to the feeling of fin on flesh. By the time Nerissa had worked her tongue and fingers inside of Katie, her prophecy had come true. Up and down and in was out, as her entire body spasmed in rapture. As her breathing became more regular, Katie reached for the bottle of water she'd always kept on her nightstand. Taking a swig like a parched pirate, her skin broke out in goosebumps as the excess water spilled and trailed down between her breasts. She'd never actually had a lucid dream before this, at least not one that she remembered. Last week, she had the urge to look into the subject more. The first two nights had been disappointing, but she was so glad she hadn't stopped trying. She drifted to sleep after snuggling back into her sheets and back into a dreamland featuring snippets of the mundane. The light tinkling of classical music brought her back into the present, her alarm declaring that it was the start of another ordinary day. She was surprisingly well-rested, considering her escapade the night before. She sat up in bed. The afterglow was back, and that wasn't an unwelcome thing. It was like a drug, although one she had never thought could exist. The world was a brighter place, and she was happy to be in it. She rolled her eyes as she saw that Jack had texted her again late into the night. Her lack of contact with him likely sparked his passion for their illicit trysts. She had responded, Jack, this is over. Please don't contact me again. That had stopped him in his tracks for a few days. But then, just last week, 
He sent the odd one here and there. Katie figured if she paid him no attention, he would eventually get bored and leave her alone. Not so. Honey, don't play hard to get. I know you want my D. Katie crinkled her nose as she read his latest text. Katie crinkled her nose as she read his latest text. This was slightly amusing because she had no intention of ever seeing him again. His D wasn't all that delightful after all, at least not compared to Nerissa's tail and tongue. No contest. She'd flirted with the idea of changing her number, but all of her contacts would want to know why, as she'd used the same number since high school. For now, the safest course of action seemed to be to keep ignoring him. She blocked him, pushing away a pang of sadness as his name disappeared from her text log. Katie ran a comb through her hair, raking her scalp and causing it to tingle as she plaited it into a simple braid. Her first class today wasn't that tough, just Poe, but she wanted to at least look like she hadn't rolled out of bed. Not that it mattered much about what any of the other students thought. That was until she walked into the room and saw the substitute teacher. Tall, dark, handsome, with distinguished glasses. And more within her age range than Jack, who had been approaching 40. She would guess that this man was in his mid-twenties. His gaze briefly met hers, but swept to the side when they held each other's attention for a beat too long. His cheeks reddened, and Katie was suddenly a lot more interested in the sinister literary tales of Poe. Normally, she'd sat in the middle of the auditorium. However, she felt a nudge against her back, urging her forward. She turned to glare, but her stare was met with empty air. Not wanting to look like a total space cadet, she bounded down the rest of the stairs and took a seat up front. As she bent down to retrieve a notebook and pen from her backpack, she heard the sub clear his throat as the top of her tank ballooned out, giving him a view of her cleavage. She smiled as she sat back and stared at him. He shifted behind the podium and tapped his index finger in a nervous beat, surveying the crowded room. I wonder if this was his first time. However, as soon as he began to speak, Katie noticed that he was looking everywhere except at her. She could tell that he wasn't in his element. It was her that was making him so nervous. She took notes intently, her hand cramping as she cursed herself for leaving her laptop in her room. Maybe scribing in longhand would give her some extra credit points. Near the end of the lecture, as she was enjoying the snug fit of his trousers, one of the overachievers next to her asked the question that had been on her mind since she entered the classroom. How long are you going to be subbing for? He cleared his throat again, finally daring to slide his gaze from the student over to Katie. For at least the next four classes, I suspect. Professor Garrett was called away due to a family emergency. And will you be using the same criteria in the syllabus to grade? The annoying girl asked. Of course, although I do have to warn you that I have high standards. So to earn a top grade, you'll need to put in the work, he replied, standing up straighter. Katie nibbled on the end of her pen, then slid it in and out of her mouth ever so discreetly. I'm ready to get to work on him right now. The brazenness of the thought shocked her. And miming blowing a pen was not something she'd normally chance when it came to a professor, even a sub. She'd worked too hard to get a full scholarship to throw it away on a naughty student fantasy. He coughed uncontrollably, and Katie saw that she'd made quite an impression. She dropped her pen, instantly embarrassed. She couldn't ignore that her center had ignited when she thought about putting his silken head between her lips until he begged to venture inside her velvet depths. Students were packing up, and she struggled to throw everything in her bag so she could leave with a little dignity intact. Unfortunately, her purple highlighter rolled across the floor just as her phone clattered to the ground. 
Shit, could I be making a bigger scene here? She kept her eyes on the floor as she crawled to grab the marker. As she bent to retrieve it, their hands touched, and flames licked up her arm. Oops, sorry, he said, taking a firmer grasp on it and handing it to her. Katie snatched it away, reminding herself that she needed this course to get into the graduate program she was working towards. She needed to keep this business. Thanks, she squeaked, throwing her backpack over her shoulder and running up the stairs, fully aware that he was getting a great view of her ass in her yoga pants. A few minutes later, after she had splashed some cold water on her face, Katie felt more composed. She was smiling by the time she left the room, intending to pick up a salad for lunch from the campus cafe. As she waited in line and debated between Asian chicken and cob, she felt a hand on her lower back. She whipped her head around, ready to chew whoever was violating her personal space a new one. Jack? What the hell are you doing here? She snapped, stepping out of his reach. Jack put up his palms in a defensive gesture. Oh, wow, kitten, calm down. I thought you'd be happy to see me. I figure since you'd been so busy with school that you haven't been able to text me back, I'd come to you, he beamed. Katie was a little confused and a little frightened. The feeling of a strong palm on her shoulder and a whisper in her ear calmed her. Send him on his way. One like this will lose interest once you put the reality of your rejection on the table. Jack, I don't want to see you again. It's over. Unless you want the police involved, you need to leave, Katie said, her voice firm but rising in pitch near the end. Excuse me, is there a problem here? The substitute professor asked stepping a little closer to Katie as he turned toward Jack. A knight in shining khakis was a very welcome sight. The two men were about the same height, but there was no contest who would win. Jack, eyes blazing, shook his head and spun on his heels, storming off like a bull about to charge. Are you okay? The professor asked as he placed his hand gently on Katie's elbow. I like this one. Strong haunches, the whisper tickled into Katie's ear. She shook it off and smiled up at him. She hadn't needed a knight to rescue her, but his timely arrival gave her backup when she needed it most. Yeah, I... Sorry. (laughs) X something or rather, she said, looking down. Ah, been there, done that. Some people just can't take a hint. But wasn't he a little old for you? He asked, his eyes twinkling with amusement. Yeah, a little old and a little too married, she blurted out, her palm covering her mouth a second too late. Oh? He raised his eyebrows. I I mean, I, I didn't know about his wife. And when I did find out, we were over, Katie said not wanting to confess that Jack had beaten her to the punch initially, although it seemed like she had gotten the last word in over the past few minutes. Good for you. A bright young woman like yourself should place enough value on what she has to offer, not to accept anything less than being treated like a queen. (sighs) Thank you, Katie stammered. No need, but... Might I be the gallant knight and treat you? He asked, motioning toward the counter. The line had moved on while she had been thrust into the center of a lifetime movie. Oh, you you don't have to, she said, as something pinched the back of her arm. She brushed away the ethereal specter. Graciously allow him to feel appreciated. The whisper was now familiar to her. Nariska's husky tone rang through clearly this time. Uh, uh, All right, (laughs) and thank you, she said, smiling. They stood for a moment, letting the energy crackle between their bodies until the attendant at the counter cleared his throat. 
Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll have the cob salad and an iced herbal green tea, she ordered. And I'll have the club sandwich and a cola, the professor said. The attendant turned and retrieved their lunches from the cooler. His eyes brightened when he was told to keep the change from the $20 bill. Should we... Uh... Her voice trailed off. Not sure if he also wanted to eat together. Even though he was a substitute, she wasn't sure what the rules were for fraternizing with students. He motioned to the table in the corner of the quad. There's one. Katie took a long sip of her iced tea, trying to soothe her parched throat. So you're a sophomore? She nodded, gingerly taking a bite of her salad as she had settled in. Yes, I'm majoring in literature. Well, uh, trying to, anyway. I'd uh, like to teach eventually, like, like you. He chuckled. Well, I'm sure you would make a fine teacher. You've got a great speaking voice. I noticed that earlier. Her cheeks flushed again. Ah, oh, that was so embarrassing. He took a big bite of his sandwich and concentrated on chewing. As he swallowed, he changed the subject. You know, I actually went to school here, too. Just finished up my postgraduate degree last summer. If you're set on teaching, it might be a good idea to start thinking ahead to your admissions application. They put a lot of emphasis on the essay. I know it sounds a little premature, but it's a competitive program. What did you write about? She asked, spearing a tomato and a piece of bacon. I know it sounds cliche, but I took a competitive look at how Chaucer's tales could be used as modern parables in today's society, he said, running his fingers through his dark hair. Oh, that sounds amazing. I love literature from that time period. Well, from any time period, really. Although contemporary literature over the past ten years leaves me not as fulfilled, Katie confessed, hoping that her disdain for modern fiction would be a point in her favor. He nodded in agreement. So you definitely want to be a literature teacher then, not English? I wasn't sure, since Poe is a pretty popular elective to satisfy the creative requirement for undergrad. Yes, yes, I was lucky that my family loved reading, so I was initiated into the bibliophile society early on. I think it would be so rewarding to help other people discover that same love. Well, it's a noble ambition, I admire that, he said, brushing crumbs off his lips with a paper napkin. Katie's salad was only a quarter eaten, so she packed it up and stashed it in her bag. She'd down the rest before her next class. Back to earlier. I can't imagine how you must feel. But promise me something. If he shows up again, you'll go straight to the campus police? Or call the police if you're off campus? Yes, of, of course, she nodded. Or, well, here he said, offering a forest green square towards her. Marcus Knightley? <laughs> what a dashing name, she said, noting that it listed his school email. Just in case you ever need to talk to someone, or if you need me to let the police know what I saw, he said, shrugging. Well, thank you, and thank you for the lunch. That was very generous of you. Katie said, a little disappointed when he crumpled up his napkin and tossed it in the empty sandwich container. Why must men wolf down their food? You're very welcome. And since you disclosed your love of literature, I'm expecting a masterpiece on the paper that's due next week. Katie laughed. Well, I'll do my best. <laughs> With that, he strode away ignoring the glances of a few female senior students who hadn't failed to notice that his name wasn't the only dashing thing about him. Katie couldn't keep her mind on her history class. One war seemed to meld with another, the end result being a needless lives loss for a cause that didn't really seem to matter. She decided to duck out at the break, convinced that her time was better spent diving to the coast. 
Either she was going crazy, or Nerissa was really in her head with some telepathic link. In any case, she needed to find out. It was nearly dusk by the time she had arrived at the beach. It was as secluded as the last time she was there. She walked carefully to the exact spot where she first met Nerissa and waited for the foot traffic to die down. She took some pictures of the sun sinking down with her phone, just to pass the time. Katie shivered a little as she took a swig of her leftover iced tea from lunch. She brought out Professor Knightley's card again, smoothing one dog-eared corner. She guessed he didn't have many opportunities for giving them out. She noted that he did have an office on campus. Maybe he taught his own classes and just happened to pick up sub work for some extra cash. Although Katie was sure she would have remembered his name from the course schedule. Very Austin-esque. Tapping the card against her chin, she decided to ask him after the next class. You definitely should. He seemed like a good match. A husky voice interjected from the shallows. Katie jumped a little and then pinched her inner arm hard. Nerissa was right there in front of her. So, so I wasn't dreaming? Or was I? Katie asked. Both. But as for right here and now, we are both real. Last night was intense for me, too. I didn't intend for you to go as far as you did, Nerissa confessed, smiling. Katie reflected on her dream and that spot that had yielded to her touch. Hmm, so that's where I should be concentrating then? Nerissa's tongue darted out and it ran across her upper lip. Perhaps. But right now, all I can think of is kissing you again. Come to me, she commanded. Katie was taken back by the force in her voice. She decided to heat things up a notch. She ever so slowly began to remove her clothing, enjoying the longing she saw in Nerissa's eyes deepen with every inch of flesh she exposed. Say please, she ordered. Nerissa held her gaze for a moment before sweeping her eyes along the beach, confirming that they were still alone. The full moon reflecting off the water illuminated her eyes, so it looked like they were tinged with silver. Huffing loudly, Nerissa complied. Please, please let me dart my tongue into your salty center until you bury your hands in my hair and beg me never to stop. This was such a simple request, but one that caused tingles to run up and down Katie's inner thighs. Katie dipped a toe in the water, recoiling at the temperature. Nerissa laughed. Silly woman, you know once you're in, I'll warm you up. Katie decided to go for it and sank into the shallows up to her neck. The chattering of her teeth quieted when Nerissa drew her close. The water warmed noticeably around the mermaid. She stroked Katie's inner arms, and each touch lit a spark. Still wondering if she was dreaming, Katie ran her hands down the length of Nerissa's body. She searched for that secret spot she had dreamed about, but figured it wouldn't be appropriate to do that without some buildup. Nerissa grinned, as if reading her thoughts. You would be right. Now, may I please you? Katie nodded, her mouth suddenly dry. Nerissa pulled her close into an embrace, and their bosoms heaved in unison for a moment. Nerissa swept Katie's hair away from her neck so she could kiss her way down the gentle curve until her lips drove south into the swell of Katie's breasts. Wasting no time, now that she felt like she was on fire, Katie took Nerissa's hand and guided it down towards her center. Nerissa firmly stroked Katie's cleft, the friction causing more excitement. 
Katie lowered her hand to massage Nerissa's nipples with her tongue, then pulled them gently with her teeth, delighted that they sprang back. Nerissa gasped. Before she knew what was happening, Nerissa was laying on top of her in the shallows, her tongue thrusting into Katie's mouth. Katie's lips yielded even as her thighs spread wider. Nerissa's torso glided against hers, and Katie was surprised at how much of the texture of the scales gliding back and forth over her clit felt like another silken tongue. Her breath quickened as she gripped Nerissa's ass. Can you receive pleasure like this? Katie asked. Nerissa nodded and reached down, pressing on her own center of pleasure. Katie reached out to probe the area, gently at first, then with firmer strokes as her confidence grew. Nerissa arched her back, her dark hair falling in salt-laden tendrils over her breasts. As Katie continued stroking, she could feel the soft patch of scales yielding more. There was a nub underneath, slowly growing in size. Marveling at the thrill of exploring a mermaid's anatomy, Katie trusted that she was doing something right as Nerissa's eyes rolled back into her head and she had trouble suspending herself above Katie. Timing her strokes a little quicker caused Nerissa to pant with desire. A few more, and Nerissa cried out, arching her back again as a rush of seawater expelled itself from her secret patch. Katie held her close for a moment, feeling how different their heartbeats were. Nerissa stroked her cheek, kissing her tenderly, and began to grind against Katie's mound again, quickly. The friction drove Katie over the edge, and she bucked against the weight of Nerissa as spasms racked throughout her nether regions. Gliding against one another as effortlessly as glass cutting through water, Nerissa and Katie's lips met again, this time the desire more of a slow simmer than a boiling heat. Nerissa ran her tongue along the inside of Katie's lips, tickling her. Pulling back to gain her composure, she brushed a lock of Nerissa's hair away from her cheek. She could feel the satiny tail fin caressing the sides of her calves, the perimeter feeling like the edge of a feather. Feeling more comfortable with the mermaid form, she allowed her hands to roam over Nerissa's backside, careful not to rub them the wrong way, lest she cause the other woman pain. Nerissa suckled the top of Katie's breast, leaving a small raspberry mark in her wake. Something to remember me by, Nerissa teased, grinning. Why? Is this the last time I'm going to see you? Katie asked, panicking. Well, that's really up to you. Just once a month I can meet you here, but in your dreams I can come to you every night if you wish, she revealed her eyes hopeful. Katie laughed a little. Well, maybe not every night. I do need to get some sleep, you know, but a few times a week would be incredible. We're so good together. Ah, yes, we do make quite the pair. But about earlier, the young man, I like him. How are you able to see what's going on in my life? We have a connection now, and it'll be even stronger since you pleasured me tonight. I can turn it off if you would like. I could feel that you were aroused, though, and I couldn't resist tuning in to see who made you flush. I think he could be good for you, not like the other. I can't go back in your memories, nor would I. But I knew on that first night that we met nothing good could come from the other one. He brought you nothing but misery and pain. You're right about Jack. I can't do anything about Marcus until he's done teaching the class, though. 
Nerissa gently rolled over, so they were side by side and caressed Katie's hand. True, your learning is important, but I would be ready to strike as soon as he is free, yes? I mean, I don't even know if he's available, Katie murmured, her insecurity surfacing like an oil slick. Nerissa drew Katie's chin up, so they were looking into each other's eyes. I could feel his own desire for you. I may give you a little push if you need it, yes? She nodded. Nerissa, is any of this real? I hate to ask because right now you're the only thing I can focus on, but this all seems so... Katie's voice trailed off. So fantastical? Yes, yes, that's it exactly, even if it isn't a real word. I, I could use the push, but will that affect us? Nerissa's laugh rang out against the still water. No, dear one. No man can ever come between a siren of the sea and her land-bound flame. And that's our story. Long-time listeners and patrons especially will remember the second novel in my consentical science fiction series, Monster Whisperer, Second Class, which was released chapter by chapter in audio as I wrote it for my Patreon supporters. I am pleased to announce that this novel is now complete and available in ebook and print from the circlet imprint of Riverdale Avenue Books. Search for Monster Whisperer Second Class in your favorite ebook retailer or on the Riverdale Avenue Books website. Check the show notes for links. If your desire for fantastic erotic audio fiction isn't sated, you can get more every month over on the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash nobilis. You can join new patron ABQ Ray in enjoying monthly bonus fiction, which currently is a transformation fetish serial called My Wild Card. Patrons are also granted access to the Discord server. Come join us and let us know what you think of this episode. Oh, and patrons, check the Patreon page for some outtakes from this story. You have been listening to the Nobilis Erotica podcast. The music is composed and performed by Mass Relay. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Until next time, listen hard.